ফকরুল ইসলাম শুনতে পাচ্ছেন ফকরুল সাইফুল ইসলাম তো আছে পারফেক্টলি ব্যান মেল থেকে মনে হয় আচ্ছা সাইফুল ইসলাম সাইফুল ইসলাম তো পরীক্ষা দিয়েছেন মনে হয় নাকি আমাদের গেস্ট অলরেডি বাংলাদেশ uh they are trying to join even you know they are passing long time in their way of uh their journey that means uh, office to home you know on the way they are uh, spending a lot of time so some of them also uh joining and now already uh 20 join 21 including we actually so okay. I, I think you can, sir, uh, say something else, then you can start if you... Sure. Yeah. No type of, uh, first of all, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. And uh, I would like to send my warm greetings from Canada. Um, it's starting to get cold now here in Canada. I know it is still warm in Bangladesh. Um, also, I apologize for the time difference. I know that 10 o'clock might be a little too late for you guys, but it is still 12 noon here. So would you like me to start my presentation? Uh, you can, sir. Uh, so now you can, uh, you will start or after two minutes. Okay, okay. So we can wait for a couple of minutes again. Um, like frankly speaking, my presentation will be, um, about how uh, traffic safety may have an impact on supply chain. Okay, so uh, basically I'm not an expert in supply chain. I'm an expert in traffic safety and road design, uh, but I know that uh, traffic safety has a lot of impact on uh, supply chain because as you will see in my first slide, uh, supply chain heavily depends on uh, truck transportation. Uh, trucks are needed to uh, transport goods <coughs> to the factory, uh, transport like, uh, uh, you know, uh, manufacturing supplies. And then uh, trucks are also needed to take the products from the factory to the distribution centers and then from the distribution centers to the retailers where the consumers can go and buy those goods. So uh, truck transportation is uh, very important for the supply chain. Uh, I think we can start the presentation now. Can we? Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, if I share my screen, can you guys see my screen now? Can you see yes. my PowerPoint? Yes, 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 okay. yes, 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 yes. Very good. Okay. So, as I said here, truck, to, uh, truck transportation is an important link in the ah. supply chain. Um, Just one second. So this is like the typical diagram of supply chain. And as you can see here, trucks are needed <coughs> to transport the supplies to the uh, manufacturing facility. And then they are also needed to transport supplies from the manufacturing facility 
to the distribution center and from the distribution centers to the retailers where the consumers can go and buy the goods from those retailers. Um, with traffic collisions, we have several impacts uh, on the trucking industry, loss of lives, loss of goods, loss of investments, delays, etc. So if there's a traffic accident, the company is losing its goods, the company is losing its investment in terms of the tax owned by the company. <laughs> the driver may die in the accident, other employees of the company may die in the accident. So there are always a negative impact caused by traffic safety on the supply chain. <clears throat> the sad fact here is that, according to the World Health Organization, uh, more than 1.3 million people lose their lives every year in traffic collisions. So I'm not talking about uh, like total number of people. No, this is an annual number of people. So every year, 1.35 million people uh, die in traffic collisions. And in terms of the cost, traffic collisions cost somewhere between 2% to 7% of the overall gross domestic product of all the countries around the world. The total cost of traffic collisions exceed $2 trillion each year. $2 trillion means $2,000 billion or $2 million million each year. Uh, unfortunately, there is a strong association between the risk of uh, road traffic death and the income level of the country. Uh, according to the WHO, the World Health Organization, it was found that low-income countries, 27.5 uh, deaths per 100,000 uh, people. So every 100,000 people, uh, it is expected that 27.5 of them will die in traffic accidents. In high-income country, the rate is much, much smaller. Almost one-third of this number, or less than one-third of this number, it is only 8.3 deaths per 100,000 uh, capital. This means that the distribution of the 1.35 million people who die in traffic accident is not evenly distributed throughout the world. Unfortunately, they are more concentrated in uh, low-income countries. This is a diagram that shows all traffic death for every 100,000 capital or every 100,000 people. Uh, as you can see here, the highest rates are in Africa, followed by Southeast Asia. Uh, in Africa, like the darker green here is the rate in uh, 2008, in 2016, sorry, uh, 2013, sorry, and the uh, light green is the rate in 2016. So as you can see here in Africa, it is around 26 persons for every 100,000 capital. In Southeast Asia, it is around 20 persons for each 100,000 capital. But if you go to Europe, it is only less than 10 persons for every 100,000 capital. In terms of uh, number of countries where road deaths have changed between uh, 2013 and 2016, in low-income countries, there were 27 countries that where the number of road deaths increased between 2013 and 2016, as compared to high-income countries, where only 17 countries where the road death uh, numbers increased, and 25 countries the road death numbers decreased. Actually, overall, the road death, the number of road deaths uh, slightly increased because in low in low income countries they sharply increase and in high income countries they decrease so they even each other. Uh, the World Health Organization identified five pillars for road safety or 
five common uh, problems related to our safety. Number one, speeding, drinking, driving, uh, like driving under the influence of alcohol or uh, drugs. Uh, seat belt, helmet for bicycle and motorcycle users, and child restraints for uh, children. Uh, this is the population covered by laws that enforce each of the five uh, pillars. Uh, from the roughly 6 billion people who live on this earth, around 50% of them, or 3 billion people, are covered by laws that uh, enforce speed limits. Uh, only a little bit more than 2 billion people, which is less than 30% of the population, are covered by laws that prohibit a drunk driving. Uh, a large percentage of population, maybe 90% are covered by laws that enforce seed belt. Um, almost 50% of the population is covered by laws that enforce the use of helmet for bicycle and motorcycle riders. And as for child restraint, the number is very, very low. Less than 10% of the population is covered by laws that enforce child restraints. So if you want to analyze traffic collisions, uh, traffic collisions usually have several categories. In terms of the number of vehicles, it could be a single vehicle collision, two vehicle collision, or multi-vehicle collision. In terms of injury severity, the collision may result in no injury, and in this case, we call it a PDO, property damage only, or possible injury, or evident injury, or life-changing injury. This is an injury that causes impairment, or fatal injury. This is an injury that causes a loss of life. Usually, we we'll focus more on these three types of uh, injury severity. In terms of collision type, it could be an angle collision, head-on collision, side side collision, or other types of collision, or it could be collisions involving pedestrians or collisions uh, involving uh, bicycles or motorcycles. In terms of the collision uh, location, the collision could be located at an intersection or at mid-block, away from the intersection. If the collision is located at an intersection, then uh, it is also related to the traffic control uh, at the intersection. At the intersection, it could be two-way stop signs, only stop signs for small streets and the major street is not controlled, or always stop signs where uh, all streets or all drivers must come to a full stop, or it could be a signalized intersection or a roundabout. In terms of land use, it could be in an urban area inside the city or a rural area outside of the city or a suburban area, which is the outskirts of the city. Usually you focus more on urban and rural areas. Uh, so how can we address the problem of traffic safety? On the national level, of course, we can do a lot we can pass new laws that uh, you know involve traffic safety we can also increase uh, the enforcement of the existing laws and we can increase the enforcement of the existing laws by hiring more police officers by using uh, technologies such as radars uh, red light cameras uh, and other technologies that can enforce the laws. Uh, we can also improve driver education and the licensing uh, program for divers. Uh, vegan inspection programs, for example, in many countries, uh, you have to have your vegan inspected every year in order to renew the registration for the vegan. Uh, also, countries 
can invest in safer road facilities and involving post-crash response systems. This is a very important uh, area here is to involve the healthcare facilities that can uh, treat uh, people who are injured in traffic collisions. It was found that uh, most people who are injured in traffic collisions uh, can die if not treated within uh, 30 to 60 minutes after the collision. So uh, you, the country must have uh, good medical facilities and good ambulance system that can uh, quickly take the injured persons to uh, the medical facilities in order to receive the medical attention needed within uh, the shortest time uh, before those people lose their lives. Uh, this is if we are talking about the national level. If you want to talk about site-specific levels, this means that uh, you live in a city or you are responsible for a city or responsible for a region or responsible for a province or a state or even a com complete country I, and you want to identify the more problematic locations in this case you can uh, follow these steps which i will cover in more details in a few seconds the first is all safety audit uh, second is network screening third is in-service road safety review what do you mean by each of them for the first one, the road safety audit, this is an audit that is usually conducted uh, after the completion of any road facility and before the road facility goes in service. So um, the country builds a new highway or improves an existing highway or rebaves an existing highway or makes major rehabilitation for an existing highway. Before this highway is open to the public, a group of experts must go to that highway, inspect it, make a complete audit for the highway to make sure that it meets all the safety standards. And if it does not meet the required safety standards, authority must take to make this highway uh, safe for the public. For example, they can reduce the speed limit, they can post new warning signs, or they can uh, add new traffic control devices or any uh, other measures that can improve the safety on the highway. Then the second stage is network screening. Network screening means that you collect collision data from all sites from all the intersections and all the roads and every year or every three years or every five years you analyze the data and you see where are the most problematic uh, locations so that you can give more attention to those problematic locations and the third step is the in-service road safety review and this comes after identifying the problematic location you can now go to that particular location have a closer look at it and uh, see what can cause the uh, problems at that particular location so before we move to explain all these steps i'm showing you this um, screen from the United Nations, and these are the five pillars for road safety, which are a little bit different from the pillars that were suggested by um, the World Health Organization. So, for example, uh, World Health Organization identified speed, drink driving, seat belt, helmet, and child restraints. These are very uh, specific. For the United Nations, they talk in uh, general. So first, 
it is all safety management, meaning that uh, the country must uh, collect and analyze uh, data related to road safety uh, so that they can identify problematic locations. Below number two, safer, safer vehicles, make the vehicles safer. Uh, by inspection, by uh, improving the manufacturing standards, and so on. Pillar number three, uh, safer road users, by driver education, licensing system, and so on. Pillar number four, post crash response that we spoke about before. Uh, Pillar number five, safer driving environment, which includes safer roads and safer uh, traffic control devices and safer uh, vehicles and so on. So, uh, this is usually part of what we call Vision Zero Initiative. Vision Zero is an initiative that started in Sweden and it is now expanding to uh, all over the world, approximately. I have seen Vision Zero in, in most most of the countries that I have visited, either in Europe, in Asia, in the Middle East, here in North America. And once you collect the data, usually you can uh, make the data accessible to the public, either by publishing annual reports or by uh, posting it as an interactive map on your website. Uh, so this is an example network screening from the city of Hamilton here in Canada. And this is part of an annual report that they publish every year. So here they identify the most 15 problematic locations. Some of them are intersections. Some of them uh, are uh, mid block locations. For example, this is a ramp to a uh, highway. This is a two-way uh, sub-controlled intersection, number two. Number three is an urban road, it is not an intersection. This is number four here is a ramp. Number five is another ramp. Number six to nine, these are all roads. Uh, number 10 is a ramp, and then you have another intersection and so on, okay? For each of them, you have the total number of collisions. So for example, for uh, the first one, uh, it experienced 39 collisions in five years between 2013 and 2017, okay? Uh, and you go, another one experiences seven collisions, uh, 44 collisions and so on. So this is very useful to identify the problematic locations. And here I'm showing another uh, example from the city of Ottawa, which is the capital city of Canada. And again, they are showing the top 10 most problematic locations in the city. Uh, for example, here, this is an intersection between Wells Drive and uh, West Hunt Club Road. And this particular intersection experienced 32 collisions in five years. Uh, this is another intersection. Some of them are uh, just roads, not intersections, and so on. Um, this is an interactive map from the city of Toronto, where I live and work here. And this is more visual because uh, you can now look at the map and see how many traffic collisions uh, that occurred at every intersection and on every road. For example, by looking at this map, you can see that there uh, should be a problem around this area here because traffic collisions are more concentrated around this area, which is, of course, the downtown core area. And it's also important that this red dot means it was a fatal collision. So by looking here, you have two fatal collisions in this area, two fatal collisions in this area, 
two fatal collisions in this area. So you can now have a closer look at these locations to see what should have caused those fatal uh, collisions. This is another interactive map from York region, uh, which is just north of the city of Toronto here in Canada. And again, you can, uh, it is more visualized. So you, by looking at the map, you can see uh, how many collisions occurred at every intersection and how many collisions occurred on every road in that uh, region. Uh, now, once you identify the problematic locations, you need to have an in-service uh, or safety review. This means that, let's say, for example, any of these locations that were identified. For example, you identify this intersection and you, say, you see, oh, now I have 32 traffic collisions that occurred at that particular intersection. Let me go to that intersection and see what should have caused these collisions. So you go to the intersections. This is what is now called the in-service uh, review. And based on the type of the collision, there could be possible causes. And I'm summarizing them in this table. So let's say you have many uh, left turn collisions. The probable causes could be number A or B or C or D or E. What is number A or B or C or D or E? We can now go to this uh, legend. A is large turning volume. B is restricted side distance. C is amber phase was too short. The yellow time is too short in the traffic signal. D, there is no left turn phase in the traffic signal or E, excessive speed. For each of them, there are suggested treatment. For example, about the excessive speed, number E, the possible countermeasure would be number 15. What is number 15? You go to another table here, and number 15, reduce the speed limit. So you can now change the speed limit from, uh, for example, 60 km per hour, make it 50, or from 50 km per hour, make it 40. And this is just an example. You can have another example here. Let's say you have uh, right angle collisions at signalized intersections. The possible causes could be B or E or H or, K or L or N or O. Is it necessary that all these causes will be uh, like, will exist at that particular intersection? Of course not. It all depends on your uh, site inspection, you go and inspect the site and you see what is the most probable uh, cause among those causes. What is B, E, H? So for example, B is restricted site distance, E is excessive speed, H is inadequate roadway lighting, and I think he also said K. Uh, yeah, K, L, N, O. K, poor traffic control device visibility, uh, N, inadequate signal timing, uh, N, inadequate advanced intersection warning signs, or large total intersection volume. So when you go to the site, you go with like a list of the possible causes. And from those possible causes, you see which one is the most probable cause from among those causes, okay? And for each one, there are countermeasures that you can implement uh, in order to address those causes. So for example, if you look at uh, K, which is, uh, we said K is board traffic control visibility, uh, the countermeasures for it could be uh, 14 or 27 or 32. For example, 14 install or involve on signs, 27 is install overhead signal, 32 is add signal heads uh, to increase the visibility of the traffic signal, and so on. Okay. So when you 
implement your counter measures, you don't need to invent the wheel every time you, uh, you make a car. Like now when we make the car, the car manufacturer does not need to invent the wheel because the wheel was already invented from before. Similarly, when you implement the countermeasures, there are countermeasures that have already been implemented before and you can access this website from the Federal, uh, the Federal Highway Administration. And when you access this website here, it can tell you whether this countermeasure is useful or not useful. This is an important website from the Federal Highway Administration, and it will tell you pretty much whether this website is useful or not, and we call it the crash modification factor. So the crash modification factor is a multiple multiplicative factor used to compute the expected number of crashes after implementing the counter measure. So for example, here they suggesting, uh, for example, adding a traffic lane, for example, or install a stop sign. So installing a stop sign, this is a counter measure. If it has CMF of, for example, 0 0.8, it means what? It means that it was found before that the traffic collisions after installing a stop sign were 80% from those before installing the stop sign, okay? So CMF equals 0 0.8, meaning that the number of collisions after the treatment was 0 0.8 from the number of collisions before the treatment. Or in other words, the traffic collisions were reduced by 20%. So if you're talking about CMF, this is 0 0.8, which is the number of collisions after the treatment. If you want to talk about CRF, which is the crash reduction factor, this is the 0 0.2, which is the 20% reduction after installing the traffic collision. So as you can see here, CMF equal one minus CRF divided by 100. Or in, other, in our example here, if the traffic collisions were, were reduced by 20%, then one minus 20 over 100, this is 0 0.8, which is the CMF. And this website will give you a complete list of all the crash modification factors and the crash reduction factors that have already been uh, installed before in the United States. And I'm showing you some examples here. For example, they found that if you widen the road shoulder from six foot to nine foot, uh, six foot is approximately two meter, nine foot is approximately three meters. So you widen your uh, road shoulder by one extra meter from two meter to three meter, this will likely reduce the number of collisions by 21%, okay? Which collision type? All collision types. In which severity? All severity. And this is only on all roads. And this is the reference for it. And the stars here gives an indication on how reliable you can use this CMF. For example, this is three star, which is magical, not excellent, but not too bad, okay? Uh, for example, you want to install a raised island in the middle of the road. They found that this can reduce traffic collisions by approximately 71%, which is excellent, of course, okay? And the star rating here is four star, which is excellent, almost excellent rating. It is very good rating. And this will reduce all crash types, all severities, and this is in urban area. And this is the reference for uh, this crash modification factor and so on, okay? So how this website from the Federal Highway Administration calculate the stars, they are calculated based on these metrics uh, number one, study design. Uh, for example, 
if like it was statistically a study design with reference group or randomized experiment and control, this is excellent rating. Uh, if it was just a very simple before and after studies, this is poor rating. Then sample size, standard error, potential bias, and data source. So one, two, three, four, five, these are the five stars that you can see here. Each star could be either excellent or fair or poor. Uh, there are important resources that we usually use for uh, self safety. Uh, here in Canada, we use the Canadian Road Safety Audit Guide, and it was published by the Transportation Association of Canada. Uh, we usually also use the Canadian Guide to End Service Road Safety Review. It was also published in 2004 by the Transportation Association of Canada. Uh, the World Road Association published what's called the PIARC, in 2009, and it is called Road Safety Manual. This is very important publication, and it is, it is actually available for free uh, that you can access the PIARC uh, website, and you can download the Road Safety Manual for free. The, in the United States, they have what's called the Highway Safety Manual. It is published by the ASTO, which is the State Highway uh, professionals, and it was published in 2010. So this is just a photo of the cover of the Highway Safety Manual that is usually used in the United States and Canada. Uh, these are the two Canadian uh, books that I'm talking about, one for uh, in-service road safety review and the other one for road safety audit. And this is the PIARC uh, road safety uh, Manual. Any questions so far? Thank you. Audiences, any question from your side? Any questions here? Uh, some Dawar, are you an engineer? Yes, I'm a civil engineer, actually. Really? Yes, yes. <laughs> uh... I have PhD in civil engineering. I, I see your presentation. It's a nice presentation. Very technical issues and very interesting. Thank you. Very resourceful, actually. Very informative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of Thank data issues, and uh, actually, these are very important to analyze. Yeah. Right. Any yeah. other questions here? So in Bangladesh, we are facing such situations almost every day and now. All the things here mentioned are realistic in our country also. So the measures you have suggested or the research suggested uh, in Bangladesh, in, in most of the cases, it is not actually giving any benefit because the people are not well aware about these uh, things. So government, uh, so, yeah. civil society and other people are trying to convince and building the awareness. But in most of the cases, the general people are not interested to follow the rules and regulations. I know and I understand this. Actually, like- Do you have probably... any, any particular suggestions for the country like Bangladesh, where the uh, population density is very high. I know. Actually, I'm very familiar with this. I was born in Egypt, and traffic safety in Egypt oh, is not the best also. And I worked for 10 years in uh, Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates. And uh, traffic safety is not the best, but it is not as bad as in Egypt. I have visited several countries around the world, and I have seen traffic safety in Indonesia, in Malaysia. Uh, unfortunately, I never been to Bangladesh before, but I have seen uh, Thailand. I have uh, traveled to Europe, to Central uh, America. And, I can see the very big variation in terms of traffic safety. And I fully understand what you mean here, that 
uh, sometimes because of the high density of population, uh, it is very hard to maintain a good quality of traffic safety. And this is why I added this photo here. I think this photo is from Southeast Asia. And uh, the unique thing about Southeast Asia is that <clears throat> a very uh, large percentage of vehicles is either motorcycles or bicycles. Okay, so uh, many people or most of uh, people are using either uh, motorcycles or uh, bicycles. And the problem here is that any collision involving a motorcycle or, bi or a bicycle is almost a fatal collision <laughs> because they are not protected by anything. Okay, so if a motorcycle or a bicycle is hit by a vehicle, it is a very, very bad injury, of course. Okay, I understand that uh, traffic safety is not easy. And this is why, if you realize in my presentation, uh, I'm referring to, uh, you know, international organizations like the World Health Organization or the United Nations, because traffic safety is a common problem and it is a worldwide a problem that needs uh, approach from uh, the government, the media, the users, vehicle manufacturers, uh, the education system, you know, like many people can interact together to improve traffic safety. Uh, from what I have seen previously in either Egypt or the United Arab Emirates is that they usually started from law enforcement. Uh, law enforcement. So, if they start by having more uh, strict diving rules and they try to apply those uh, diving rules and those diving rules must be reasonable like you cannot have a country like Bangladesh where you have very high population the rules are extremely you know uh, uh, busy and in, in a case like this, you don't need to enforce speed limit because speeds are already low, okay? And instead you need to enforce rules of, of the road, for example, who should go first, okay? You need to enforce the helmet, like uh, I have seen in uh, countries similar to Bangladesh when uh, they started to enforce laws that all mm. uh, riders of bicycles and motorcycles must wear a helmet, uh, traffic safety have significantly improved. So this is a solution that we can approach. Uh, enforcing seatbelt, enforcing, uh, you know, the prohibition of uh, driving under the influence of alcohol. These are things that you can start with. And then you can also improve the roads, which I know it is not cheap, it is very expensive. Um, you can educate people more. Media is very important here because uh, unfortunately sometimes uh, teenagers when they see movies uh, that show the character is riding his motorcycle without a helmet and uh, trying to do wheelies or other stunt uh, driving, then some teenagers may try to do something similar, which is, of course, very bad influence here, okay? Uh, and instead, you need to educate those teenagers that uh, traffic safety is important for everyone, and we need to enforce traffic safety in our community. Does this answer your question? Yes, thank you. One thing I have noticed in your statistics, the South Asian and the African region are high. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is like... Uh, yes. America, uh, uh, the, their infrastructure and other things is very... Uh, good and very standard, but their rate is still high. What's the reason? High speed? Uh, 
because when they talk about Americas here, this is the general region as per WHO, which includes both uh, North America, Central America, and South America. So uh, Americas here include, uh, you know, countries like Canada, United States, Mexico, Brazil, Argentina, uh, El Salvador. So there's very large variation here in terms of diving habits, in terms of road design, in terms of vehicle safety, in terms of diver education. Uh, but if you want more a uh, clear uh, picture, then you can go to the WHO website, download the report, and in that report, they have more specific uh, statistics that are specific to each uh, smaller region and even to each country. For example, you can see uh, all the details related to Bangladesh only, or all the details related to Canada only, and so on. Okay, but here I'm just showing the very, very big picture that in terms of America, it is not very consistent. Like Southeast Asia, like this includes India, Pakistan, Bangladesh. So this might be a little bit consistent. Africa could be consistent. Europe is not very consistent because there are countries in Europe that have much better safety than the others. For example, you cannot compare diving conditions in Sweden with diving conditions in Ukraine, for example, okay? Uh, but again, if you download the complete report from the World Health Organization, you can see the statistics for each specific country, okay? Yeah, thank you. Any other questions? I haven't any question because I am an also engineer. So I understand your presentations very well. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're muted, doctor. Doctor, you are muted. I can't hear you. You, uh, your, your PhD in transportation. So we need uh, a lecture from you, transportation in supply chain. If you have any, then it will be very good opportunity for our learners to learn from you because uh, transportation is a very uh, important issue, actually. This is a very important factor in uh, supply chain. It would be my pleasure, of course, like I can prepare a presentation on, I can prepare a presentation on traffic congestion and how it is related to a supply chain. Is this a good topic? Yeah. Yeah. Whenever I have time, uh, most likely this would be around January or February. Yeah. Because currently I'm too busy, but I, yeah. I, actually I'm very pleased to have this presentation and I would be more pleased if I have another presentation for you guys. Yeah. Unless, of course, you, <laughs> you did not you enjoy are, this presentation. <laughs> you, you are most welcome in Bangladesh. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're Thank most you. Welcome in Bangladesh. And uh, end of this month, actually, I'm uh, now I'm in Bangladesh. I'm going to Malaysia. We have uh, actually operation in Malaysia. So I have seen that uh, you are vice president of Advantage uh, Forensic Incorporation. So are you the uh, founder, director of this, or uh, you are? I'm partner and vice president of the company. So this is a company that investigates tough collisions and determines. Uh, the lessons that you can take from those collisions in terms of like my specialization is more on uh, road design and road maintenance. So we uh, analyze traffic collisions to determine if there was any issue with the road design or uh, if there was any issue with the road uh, maintenance or something so that, you know, we can establish the liability in this case. And at the same time, the municipality also can learn the lesson and they can fix what was wrong with them in this problem. Okay. And actually, actually, I feel proud of seeing that when you uh, actually share our information in your uh, side that I am proud of, proud that Advantage Forensic is selected by the Canadian Lawyer Magazine as the top expert witness engineering firm in Canada for accident investigations and reconstructions. 
actually this is a great recognition for the talented uh, fantastic and team i am proudly working with so you it, this is your contribution i think Oh, thank you very much. Actually, like we are, like we have several engineers here at Advantage Forensics, and I'm just one of them, of course. Uh, like we have president, we have two vice president, we have uh, senior engineers, we have junior engineers, and we have staff. Uh, we also have, you know, sub consultants, and I'm proud of the work that we are doing because I feel that, you know, we can. Uh, in both safety and we can uh, serve the justice uh, in relation to traffic uh, collisions. And uh, actually the reason why I said my next presentation will be maybe in January or February, because I'm currently too busy because I'm preparing for a course that I will be teaching next month to uh, municipal engineers engineers who work for different cities and regions here in Canada. Uh, they will attend this course where I can teach them about uh, road design and traffic safety. Okay, so uh, after I teach this course and then there will come the winter holidays. After this, of course, we can arrange for another presentation about yeah. uh, how traffic congestion is related to supply chain. Thank you, Prof. Thank you very much for your actually good presentation today. I am very actually, uh, I enjoyed it and I got it very good from you that you have clarified whole thing very well. So nice Thank to you meet much. you today and next time we, we are going to meet you again in January. But before that, if you can manage time, that would be actually luck for us. You know, we are enjoying your lesson very much. Uh, you did actually your master's and PhD in Ryerson University, and now you are the, uh, the academic uh, professor in this university. So you are busy in the advantage forensic, but before, besides this, you are also teaching. So this is very uh, good. Yeah. Yes, this is true. Yeah, I'm also teaching at Ryerson University. Uh, currently, I'm not teaching full courses. I'm giving uh, like lectures, like. Um, for example, this year I'm giving only two lectures, but the more important is that I'm uh, supervising, uh, you know, graduating students when they do their graduation uh, project. So I also supervise uh, students and their what we call capstone or graduation uh, project. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you very much. Yeah. Good night. Thanks. Good night. Bye bye. 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 Thank you so much.